How's it going, world? Hope you're well, hope you're safe, hope you've had a good day. Mate, gorgeous morning today, weren't it? Absolutely beaut. So, welcome back to the Rules of Thinking with Richard Templar. Uh, yesterday we went over rule number 19, focus on other people. Now, the whole topic covered in rule number 19 yesterday, it just made me think of uh, my mum quite a bit, to be honest. My mum and my dad, they fostered over 25 years, right? And over them 25 years, they had like about a thousand kids come through their door. Like when my mum was at 800 and something odd kids, 850 odd kids, I think, uh, she won an award, uh, a humanitarian award from She Magazine. So, and she carried on fostering for uh, a good number of years after that. So, yeah, pretty sure we hit a thousand. And yeah, my mum, she never closed the door to anyone. Do you know what I mean? She was focused on other people. So, it just, I suppose it just taught. All of us in the family, like, if you can help someone out, it's the right thing to do. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Don't forget other people, yeah? So, today we're going to go over rule number 20. Be in the present. Let's see what Richard's got to tell us today. Richard, if you ever watch these videos, like, let me know what you think, yeah? <laughs> so, where do you tend to live? Past, present or future. Most of us have a tendency toward one or the other. And they all have their pros and cons. Even if you're inclined to live in the present, however, you tend to do it unconsciously most of the time. I'd say that's true. I'd say I've been trying to make uh, like a conscious effort of living in the present um, for many, many years now to the point where I don't consciously have to try and think of it too much. I don't really think much of the future and I don't really think much of the past. Well, I say I don't really think too much of the future. I'm always like envisioning what I'm, what I'm building. Do you know what I mean? And I'm always trying to use the law of attraction and manifesting. So, there we go. There's a good deal of research to show that if you practice what is known as mindfulness, it can reduce anxiety, stress and depression. If mindfulness, which I think it does, have something to do with um, meditation, then I'll definitely say yeah. 100% I can vouch for that. Yeah. In part, this is because you're more likely to become aware of these feelings sooner, so you can address them before they become entrenched. Yeah. Mindfulness, in its basic form, is an exercise you set aside sometime each day to do. However, the greatest benefit is that, like other thinking styles, the more you do it, the more of a habit it becomes. Until you incorporate it into other parts of your life too, and slip in and out of it whenever it's helpful. I feel like I do that. I've been meditating for years, yeah? I'll always vouch for meditation. Like, it gives you such a clarity of thinking, and just it's just so useful. Always, always vouch for meditation. And... I, because I've been doing it so long, I practice it every single day. I can literally do like 10 second meditations, you know, throughout the day, randomly. People won't even know. I could be sat right next to you and I'm doing a little 10 second meditation and visualization exercise in my head and watching my breathing and going through all of that. And you won't even know. Like, yeah, so this seems very similar. But it's a very useful tool, 100%. Essentially, you need to set aside a few minutes each day. This might always be the same time and place, or you might vary it. Whatever works for you. You're aiming to make this a habit, though, so bear that in mind. It doesn't have to be quiet or peaceful, so long as you don't have to interact with your surroundings for the duration. So a park bench or the train to work are fine. If sitting still is difficult, you can go for a mindful walk. Now comes the tricky bit, and it will be tricky at the beginning but it will become easier and easier the more you do it. Just focus on the present moment and take the role of an observer. Notice what's happening while remaining detached from it. Don't judge. Notice that your left foot is slightly uncomfortable or that there's birdsong nearby. Notice your thoughts without judging them. Oops, yes. 
that was the really tricky bit I mentioned. You're not aiming to empty your mind as you might if you were meditating. Okay, but you don't want to get caught up in thoughts and emotions either. Okay, okay, so very similar kind of thing. Okay, you will get caught up. I can tell you now, at least until you've had plenty of practice. That's true. That's true. It definitely takes practice. That's normal. But whenever you notice you've been distracted by your thoughts, just bring yourself back to observing them without being sucked in. Yeah. This very tendency to get carried away by your thoughts demonstrates the point of mindfulness. We spend most of our time in this state, controlled by our thoughts and feelings, and mindfulness is a valuable exercise because it separates out our underlying self from our responses and reactions. It doesn't matter if you have lots of thoughts or worries while you're being mindful, so long as you observe them. Ah yes, here's some anxiety about tomorrow's presentation. Hmm, this looks like my usual worry about social situations. Stand back and look at your thoughts. Don't get involved, don't try to fix them. Interesting. I wonder why you're saying don't get involved and don't try and fix them, Richard. Maybe we'll find out in the rule you cover tomorrow. What's it called? Stress is optional. I agree on that one. Yeah, okay. Maybe I'm curious why you're saying don't get involved and don't try and fix them. What are your thoughts? What do you think? Like, let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation about it, yeah? But the moral of the story is stand back and look at your thoughts. Don't get involved. I wonder why. Hmm. I'll catch you tomorrow. Cheers.